right. Some more doping designs, this time emitters. Let's look at the emitter doping and what can be done and in there to improve device performance. Uh, again, this is uh, driven by this simple expression here for the current gain. And uh, you could increase the current gain by ramping up the doping in the emitter. Seems rather straightforward. Let's look at a couple of effects that are not so straightforward. All right. As you go to higher doping, your band gap actually changes. And that's a rather complicated many body effect, but you can uh, measure it experimentally for sure. And then there's a whole crew of people who study this theoretically to express it and uh, explain it. That's not the topic of this course, but you can pull up experimental data and a couple of models. And here is the pl uh, a plot of the band gap narrowing as a function of impurity concentration here, okay? All right. Now, let's look at the scales. This is milli-electron volt. And the doping ranges from 10 to the 17 to 10 to the 20, okay? So, let's say we start out from this uh, nice expression for beta here, and we say, well, we're going to start exploring what we can do with the emitter doping, okay? So let's ramp up the doping some in order to ramp up uh, beta, okay? Now, with the expressions that I have here and with a statement that the band gap can change, what you can do is you can say, well, my um, emitter and my base have different dopings, Therefore, they have uh, different um, band gaps, just as I sketched here, okay? But you can so, still say, well, I'm going to treat them kind of like the same material as they are. It's still silicon, but I have a correction here in both the um, uh, emitter and the base um, band gap, okay? So depending on the doping you have in emitter and, uh, uh, and base, um, you have a small correction to your band gap. Just for argument's sake, let's assume that the base doping is small enough down here where you can forget about any band gap narrowing effects. Okay? Uh, and do work an example this way. Regardless of that assumption, I can pull together this band gap difference into a single term here, okay? And I'm going to look at beta now as being modulated by this term. Okay, so I want to uh, modulate this term and increase beta by increasing NE, the emitter doping. So let's, for argument's sake, let's say I'm going to um, increase my emitter doping by a factor of 40. Okay, so let's say I go from a reasonable 10 to the 18 to also very reasonable 10 to, uh, 4 times 10 to the 19. So I'm going to go from here to here. Okay, okay. So I'm going to increase my doping from here to here. All right, so what's the, so that means I'm going roughly from 25 milliectron volt band gap change to, let's call it 150. So I'm going from here to here, okay? So that's 125 milliectron volt change. That's roughly 5 kT ballpark, okay? So, 5 kT I put in the exponent, e to the minus 5 is 6.73 times 10 to the minus 3. I multiply my gain of 40 due to increasing Ne with this 6.73 10 to the minus 3, I get 0.27. I actually reduced the gain. Okay, so you can walk through some numbers, but 
the second order effect of modifying the band gap due to the doping destroyed the effect of trying to increase the, the gain by just the simple expression that we had before. So, doping can change band gap. Band gap can uh, immediately change the gain as well. Okay? Good. How about really high other doping? For example, here in an isaki -like, fa like fashion, where you dope degenerately, then you can have uh, isaki like tunneling from um, a base uh, to emitter, and that's no good either. Okay, so going to extremely high doping um, to the extreme where you can have uh, isaki tunneling is no good either. All right, so. We've gone through a variety of techniques, emitter doping, bring it as high as possible without band gap narrowing. Base doping, keep it as low as possible without current crowding and the early effect. Collector doping, lower it as much as you can without the Kirk effect. And base width, make it as thin as possible without punch through. So those we can devise as recipes here, but you can't do it blindly, and you have to be careful. Okay, so those are the, the options we had with the doping, and then comes along something uh, really nice. It's called a polysilicon emitter, and we'll discuss that in the next section. I'll see you then.